the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. That we cannot be full, evolved human beings until we care about human rights and basic dignity. That all of our survival is tied to the survival of everyone. That our visions of technology and design and entertainment and creativity have to be married with the visions of humanity, compassion, and justice. A commutation of sentence. First of all, let me explain what it is. It's when a sentence is commutated by the President of the United States or people acting in his interest. When you commute something, you change it in some way. You take it back in some way. To commutate a sentence means, for instance, I get 50 years. And I get 50 years for stealing a broom out of an abandoned building. Mm, kind of disproportionate. So, you have to figure if there's any mercy in justice. And if, as Brian Stevenson quotes, you are better than the worst thing you have ever done. If that's true, and if we are to be seen as human beings with any kindness and any spirituality in us, we've got to know that to give somebody life even worse, death is, a, is this an unholy thing to do. I've come to understand and to believe that each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. I believe that for every person on the planet. I think if somebody tells a lie, they're not just a liar. I think if somebody takes something that doesn't belong to them, they're not just a thief. I think even if you kill someone, you're not just a killer. And because of that, there's this basic human dignity that must be respected by law. In order to go out on parole, you had to be a certain model uh, prisoner. You had to go to school, education, and try to develop certain things that you didn't, skills and things that you didn't have in order to convince the parole board that you're ready to come back in society. Well, Guy, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So sometimes when the law is trying to be strict and they come with these new drug laws in the 70s and the 80s and the Rockefeller laws and they make sense to put them in place at the time because we want to prevent recidivism. We want to drop the rate of crime in our city. And if you are a kingpin, a mastermind of a major drug distribution operation, we want those prison spaces to be reserved for you. Yes, but if the punishment is not tempered with mercy, then it's not justice. I know Guy Fisher from back when we grew up. I know Guy Fisher in the era when he was in the street. And I know now Dr. Guy Fisher. I know that since the time that he's been incarcerated, he's been a role model inmate. I know since the time he's been incarcerated, uh, he's been an inspiration to other people. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people that have reached out, you know, to speak with him. I have letters personally that he have written me. I have letters that he have written to my church, encouraging them to support me. To be away for 32 years and to get a turnout like this, it speaks by me. And I believe that God sees this. I believe that he hears our petition. I believe that our petition is strong. And I just would strongly advise us not to depend on a man to make this happen. But let's put our trust in God. Amen. Because he can do anything but fail. And I believe that he's going to answer this prayer. And so we're going to put this petition up together. And I'm a man of faith. And I believe that what you believe, that you have the power to make it come to pass. Amen. Uh, he's done a remarkable thing because in prison today, they're not pushing you to get an education and that's happening with him. As a matter of fact, he's the only person in the history of the penal system, state or federal, has acquired four degrees 
during his incarceration. You know, he got his associate's degree, his bachelor's degree, his master's degree, and he got his doctor's degree in sociology. Uh, Guy Fisher was not convicted of any murders. And Guy Fisher is in jail for being convicted of drug dealing or racketeering. So no one's denying that that was a fact. No one's trying to paint him as a saint or an angel. But do you deserve life at 35 years old for the rest of your life with no possibility of parole for a case where there was not one single shred of drugs as evidence? He was convicted of the RICO Act for co continuing a criminal enterprise over time. I agree it's illegal. It's sensible, but not life. <laughs> To the extent money can help in meeting the problem of dangerous drugs, it will be available. This is one area where we cannot have budget cuts because we must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States. You know, the, the great increase in mass incarceration in this country wasn't really in violent crime categories. It was this misguided war on drugs. That's where the dramatic increases have come in our prison population. And we got carried away with the rhetoric of punishment. And so we have three strikes laws that put people in prison forever. He has changed. If they call it a uh, correction facilities, once the correction is done, why does the person still have to suffer? So is it correction or is it punishment? Do I believe that he's paid his debt to society for what he's done? I believe he has. He definitely deserves a second chance in. He's proven that he can stand up and stay focused on his accomplishments under those circumstances is phenomenal. And, and that's enough. And I think that uh, after 33 years, it's, it's not much more you can get from him. So the commutation of sentence hopefully will kind of balance that out and meet him in the middle some way. It's time for him to come home now. He has so much to give back to our communities and to our children. You can say what you want to say, and I can say what I want to say, but are they listening to us? They'll listen to Guy Fisher because he's walked the walk and he's done the time. He can talk the talk. They'll listen and they'll hear him. And he might be able to save a life or two. And anybody that have had contact with him, including the people that work in the system, knows that the Dr. Guy Fisher, who he is now, is not the Guy Fisher they sentenced back 33 years ago. Everybody deserves another chance. When I go to see him on visits, the hardest thing for me to do is to leave him there. I mean, I have to go. This now is over, but to leave him there is painful for everybody involved because it's such a waste. All the talent that he has to give back, and he's stuck in a place where he's mentoring and he's sharing it with younger inmates, but there's a whole big world out here that needs him. What we've been doing has not been working. We are not reaching our youth. I know that there's a strong possibility that he could make a huge difference. I just pray that he gets the chance to do it. Thank you.